Thank you, Nathan, for reading uh, to us from the um, from the Bible. It was actually from Acts chapter 18. I think being his first time here, he was a bit nervous. But thank you for coming up bravely. Good morning, church. And um, what a privilege again it is to stand before you all to bring the word of uh, God to you. Uh, once again, it has been quite some time that I have come up here, but I thank God for uh, giving me yet another opportunity. Uh, Akila and Priscilla, I thought, why don't we study? I just wanted to learn more about their life. So I thought, okay, let me um, read and do a study of this couple uh, in, uh, to, in this morning. So as Nathan has read to us from Acts chapter 18, we come across this lovely couple named Akila and Priscilla, um, who were uh, basically a Jewish couple. Husband Akila um, originally is from Ponte, uh, Pontus, which is a part in the modern day Turkey. And um, Priscilla appears to have belonged to an aristocratic family from Rome. Maybe she was a wealthy lady, uh, you know, very from an influential family. Uh, after their marriage, uh, it looks like they both have settled down in Rome and probably they were having a very happy and uh, a very, you know, luxurious life. Till uh, the Roman emperor, uh, Emperor Claudi Claudius, ordered an expulsion of Jews from Rome. So all the Jews uh, who were residing in Rome were asked to leave Rome because, uh, we, uh, and uh, these Jews were the Jews who believed in Christ. So uh, there were some clashes, I think somehow, you no know, religious clashes that happened. There were some clashes and uh, to, uh, to, uh, bring this into un, uh, under control, Emperor Claudius ordered expulsion of Jews from there uh, between, you know, there were clashes between the Romans and uh, Jews and especially be, uh, those who believed in Christ. So because of these clashes, um, uh, Aquila and Priscilla had to leave Rome and they became refugees. They were moving from one part of uh, you know, the ancient uh, Christian, um, um, you know, countries where, you know, uh, they were traveling across Greece and then finally they came and settled down in a place called Corinth. Now, Aquila and Priscilla were tent makers by professions. Maybe they had taken this up as a profession after they left Rome because before that, I don't think they had any need to make tents. But uh, when they became refugees, uh, I think they took up this profession of tent making and uh, that's how they made their living. And that was also uh, being refugees, uh, tents would have been in demand uh, when wherever they placed themselves. So they took up this profession of tent making and they were making a living out of this tent making. That was when um, uh, Apostle uh, Paul met uh, these, uh, this couple. So Paul was again traveling uh, to Antioch and on the way, I think he, he, he came to a place called the uh, uh, Corinth where Aquila and Priscilla were there. Now, before uh, they met Paul, the Bible doesn't record if Aquila and Priscilla were believers of Christ, but certainly after they have met Paul, they were influenced by teaching of Paul uh, and they accepted Christ and they started preaching Christ and the resurrected Christ's life. So that is how the Christian journey, uh, or we can say the proper Christian journey of Aquila and Priscilla started in Corinth. Uh, <clears throat> history uh, tells us that uh, Paul stayed with Aquila and Priscilla for almost one and a half year. And in this one and a half year, uh, Paul would have mentored to Aquila and Priscilla in base of Christ. Um, so from being refugees 
and from being tent makers, Akila and Priscilla now graduated to become teachers, teacher, teaching the ways of Christ. While they were staying in Corinth, uh, there was another Jew who was again like Akila and Priscilla, maybe dispersed from the place where he was living. He came down to Corinth and uh, um, he, he was, um, yeah, not, not to Corinth, but uh, Akila and Priscilla, after staying for a few days uh, in Corinth, uh, leave uh, Corinth to go to Ephesus. It, it's another place on the way uh, uh, to Jerusalem, the place where actually Paul was aiming to go. So on the way to Jerusalem, Akila and Priscilla leave uh, Corinth along with Paul and come down to a place called Ephesus. Now, Ephesus is a place where um, you know they meet up with this person called Apollos. Right, Apollos again was a Jew and uh, he was very eloquent in the uh, scriptures uh, in the Old Testament. Um, and he was preaching about Christ um, and he didn't know about the Pentecost. Uh, he didn't know about the uh, coming of the Holy Spirit and he was preaching about the water baptism of uh, Christ. So when Akila and Priscilla heard uh, this man speaking about Christ, they immediately recognized that he was not aware of the uh, coming down of the Holy Spirit. And they start mentoring this person, Apollos, and uh, um, they introduce him to the more powerful teaching of, you know, uh, knowing God through his spirit. So Akila and Priscilla, they started as a refugees, then uh, they have now come to a stage where they started mentoring others in the ways of Christ. Um, and from there, Paul actually leaves Aquila and Priscilla in um, you know, the place where Ephesus, and he goes on to, uh, on his further missionary trip up to Jerusalem. And uh, this couple stays back in Ephesus and they start a church. So they were not only uh, mentors, but they also have become uh, hosts or uh, church leaders by now. So we see a gradual improvement in the spirituality of this couple from being refugees to being uh, hosts of church or you know uh, where they have planted and raised their own church spreading the word of god now history tells that from there once uh, the empress claudius died um, the decree that he has passed also stands cancelled the next emperor emperor nero comes into the reign in rome and he cancels this uh, you know decree against jews so Aquila and Priscilla return back to their um, uh, home, which is Rome. So when they go back to Rome, they go there and again start a church and uh, they contribute to the growth of Christianity in Rome. So this is um, the story of this beautiful couple whom we come across in the New Testament where we see how from uh, how they started off humbly in a very low key man, uh, matter, manner and then they raise up to become leaders in nurturing the church of Christ um, in Rome. So uh, we do not actually know what actually happened to Aquila and Priscilla after they returned back to Rome. But uh, if you see, uh, uh, no, if you see the pages of history, um, uh, we come to know that they were actually martyred. Uh, in, uh, in the year uh, six, uh, 64, after the death of Christ, um, there was, uh, it seems there was a great fire in the city of Rome. Have you ever heard of this, the great fire? Uh, right? So <clears throat> history tells that this fire destroyed almost 10 of the uh, 14 provinces of Rome. This was a very huge fire. 
which lasted for almost six days. So it took six days for the uh, 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 Romans to control this fire. And by then most of the city and the provinces of Rome were destroyed. And uh, Emperor Nero blamed that this fire was actually started by Christians because there were this uh, disputes between uh, you know, Jews, Christians, and the Romans. Uh, it was blamed that the Christians were the reason for the initiation of this fire. So uh, anyhow, they have controlled the fire. And after the control of fire, there was the first ever great persecution of Christians in the year 64, right? So it is believed that Aquila and Priscilla were martyred in this persecution. That was the glorious end of a beautiful couple in the pages of New Testament. Aquila and Priscilla, we find them um, in and out of the pages of New Testament, but the spotlight never being put on them. We don't know why Holy Spirit has not really mentioned each and every detail of their ministry in the New Testament, but we know for sure that God has used their life to highlight some of the important things that happened in the early days of the church, right? So we have just seen the story of one exemplary couple who invested their entire life from the time they came to know about Christ, who have invested their entire life in preaching the word and spreading the word of God and his kingdom. Now, whenever we are studying research, now some of you who have done some research might know that when we do a research or when we uh, try to prove something new, we always need to have a comparison, right? Um, we have what is called as a comparison group or the control group. So when we try an experiment to prove that this is good, we have to show something else besides this, that this is good, okay. But why is this good? Because in comparison to something which is not good, right? So in research, we have this comparison group. Likewise, when I was trying to go through the life of uh, Attila and Priscilla, we certainly know that they have lived a life worthy of the calling. But I also felt that why don't we also look at something which is not, which is not a good example, right? And to pick up again, a not a very good example, from the pages of New Testament, we have the story of Ananias and Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira, again, a couple, not a very beautiful couple, not the externally, but what I'm speaking, they were partners in crime. Yes, they were partners in crime. So uh, the story of Ananias and uh, Sapphira, Again, we find in Acts, uh, and they lived in the days where the church was of greatest purity and of power. They were living in the days of the apost apostolic era. Now, this was the time when the New Testament was bustling with enthusiasm and excitement. Now, the church is newly forming, then uh, um, people have come to know that Christ is risen from death. Then they saw him ascend into heavens. And then there was the coming down of the Holy Spirit. They were witnessing powerful miracles. They were seeing all around them a lot of uh, happening things happening around them, right? They saw dead people be, be, becoming alive. They saw the blind uh, seeing, they saw the lame walking. So these were very exciting things that were happening in the early apostolic era. Now, I think this was the reason what has attracted this partners in crime towards the church, right? So 
this was these were the days where all the new converts like on the day of pentecost all of you know that there were almost 3000 people were added to the infant church that was just forming right so all these new converts were very excited and they were working joyfully uh, and they pooled their resources because um, there were many people who were coming to jerusalem to know about christ and what was happening in this early church so they came they traveled far from their hometowns they came and stayed in jerusalem so this was the time when they didn't and they were staying for longer than they were expected to stay so this was the time when they didn't have any resources for them so the early church the apostles and the people who joined the church they pooled their um, their belongings they sold their belongings some of them and they started using for the greater use of the church right so uh, nobody asked them to um, bring in the money they were bringing it out of their free will now this was the time when uh, one person named barnabas um, he sold a piece, he sold a piece of property that he had and he brought and kept the money at the feet of uh, peter so taking this as an example possibly uh, ananias and sapphira as we see in acts chapter 5 um, they sold some of the property that they had and they brought and kept the money at feet of uh, peter and uh, you all know what happened next right peter then instantly i mean there is no where it is mentioned that uh, uh, ananias has said something about the money so peter asks him a question uh, not even a question he directly starts saying what has tempted you to do this then he goes on to say you have not lied to men but you have lied to god himself right to the holy spirit himself so that is the time when ananias falls flat and dies instantly um so <clears throat> what could have been the reason for this man to bring money nobody has asked him to give money uh, uh, nobody has questioned whether it is his whole amount that he has got from the uh, uh, sale that he has done he just brought in the money and gave but why did god uh, allow the death of ananias why did god instantly brought death over ananias again uh, possibly ananias and sapphira were uh, one of the 120 uh, disciples uh, that were present on the day of pentecost or they might have come uh, uh, into the church little later but whatever it is uh, the underlying uh, fact that we glean from this passage is ananias and sapphira they didn't have a very clean heart when they came into the church possibly they were um, wanting the fame that the disciples were enjoying or they wanted to be part of the action that was going around them, or they may be uh, aspiring for some uh, luscious post in the early church. Now, they might have seen that there is a lot of wealth coming into the church. Maybe they had a secret desire to grab a portion of that wealth that was coming into the church. And to fulfill that desire, maybe they have made a small investment of their own property into church to have access or gain into the larger property that the church was having they were actually not in they did not come into the church with a heart to serve but rather we see that their motive was different their motive was to access to the goodies that the church had with them I think some of some of us in different churches, not us, but some of our Christians around the world, around us, in some churches, we see these things happening. The motive is not to serve the church or to serve the people of God. 
the motive behind is some selfish desires which is very unfortunate this couple ananias and sapphira they wanted to buy some influence it was not that they would want to serve but they would want to buy some influence they saw an opportunity to get into a position in the growing church ananaya and sapphira wanted to be prominent members in the body of christ but with a bad motive they sought attention adulation and they wanted to appear more generous than they really were they were playing politics and that is where the trouble began they were operating in the realm of flesh rather than in the realm of spirit it becomes more evident that they were operating in the realm of flesh when we learn that their confidence in the future was not in god's faithfulness but in the money they were not in the church to serve to be leaders to serve but they wanted to be served by the wealth that was there in the church what was so wrong about their plan ananias as we read in acts chapter 5 he didn't even utter a word he didn't lie he just gave money to peter he didn't tell what percentage of money he brought in but the holy spirit already knew his intentions the spirit revealed to peter the dishonesty deceit and hypocrisy of ananaya and you know the end result he lost his life 3 hours later after ananaya was dead and buried we really don't know how the husband was buried without the knowledge of the wife but after 3 hours after ananaya's were dead was dead sapphira came in to the place where peter was asking for his husband peter asks uh, uh, sapphira a question maybe it was an opportunity given by god to sapphira to be honest peter asks tell me was this the full amount for the land you sold without a moment of hesitation sapphira because we know that sapphira and ananias ananias already had a plan so they must have discussed before ananaya brought in the money so without a moment of hesitation sapphira says yes this was the price and instantly peter declares that she would experience the same fate as ananaya's had suffered we all cringe at this illustration of divine discipline we may even be tempted to say that god has overreacted with undue harshness why did he do it if we pause for a moment and think well did god really had to be so uh, strict so firm and so maybe harsh or crude yes definitely it was needed because this this period was the formation of the early church the early church was just beginning to bloom and the kingdom of god just started to spread again in the name of jesus christ right and this was definitely a satanic attack on the early church there were attacks on the church from outside like there there were uh, sadducees and priests who tried to attack in different ways on the church that was forming in the name of christ even when christ was on this uh, on the on this world in the world they tried to attack him in many ways and after christ was gone the church was beginning to grow there was the satanic attack from outside from all of these people 
and when satan saw that that was not working and then when satan saw that the church was growing in numbers day by day and that the kingdom of god uh, through christ was spreading he started he started to attack the church from within just like how he attacked adam and eve in that garden of eden where he saw that god and man started having a relationship with each other he came into that garden and he attacked the very roots of relationship there the same tactic satan has once again used here when the early church was growing and he came through one of the church members and uh, you know attacked the church from within but god was sovereign he did not keep quiet he did not allow the church to be destroyed this time he did not allow the relationship that was growing between him and his people to be destroyed once again so that was the instant maybe the karma that happened to ananias and sapphira ananias and sapphira they were not just lying it was not a casual lie but it was a conspiracy a conspiracy that was backed up by the by the satan so from the very outset god wanted us to know how strongly he feels about his church and also how he feels about hypocrisy or we can call this as phony spirituality phony spirituality is contagious it spreads and it destroys the very nature of church god has permitted ananias and sapphira if god has continued permitted ananias and sapphira to continue with their motives it would have destroyed the witness of early church so that is how god has stopped the spread of this very dangerous characteristic in his early church so brethren we have seen two different examples a uh, example of a couple who were the dynamic duo spreading and investing their entire self into the kingdom of god and then we see this partners in crime ananias and sapphira akila and priscilla if we look at the differences between them akila and priscilla labored for the cause of christ and when we compare ananias and sapphira had labored to gain people's praise and they tried to fill in their coppers anani akila and priscilla had have we have seen that they were willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of gospel it is written in acts chapter um, uh, uh, romans chapter uh, 16 that they have even risked their life for sake of paul we do not know how they have risked bible doesn't give us an account uh, uh, like how they have risked their life to save paul's life but paul writes back to uh, thank akila and priscilla that they have risked their life to save paul's life and through paul they have um, invested they they have allowed paul to go on in mission trip and through him many gentiles were brought to jesus christ so they have invested everything including their life while ananias and sapphira pretended to sacrifice their material possessions and their light to holy spirit the impact of the couple's devotion in the through the life of akila and priscilla reached to the far extent of the world where as i mentioned even gentiles were brought into the church of god but the example of ananias and sapphira was used to bring discipline and uh, to teach a lesson that dishonesty and hypocrisy is not tolerated in the church of god akila and priscilla made their home a place where christ was honored and served they passionately sacrificed and devoted all their lives 
for the sake of gospel. Ananias and Sapphira have lost their lives in the process of seeking honor for themselves. So a penetrating question lingers in our minds as we draw curtains to, uh, to the lives of Akila and Priscilla and Ananias and Sapphira. What is the motivating factor in our lives? Which is really more important to us? To maintain appearance of spirituality or genuinely to be what God wants us to be? Cultivating the appearance alone leads to death. Death in the sense that a spiritual death to spiritual growth, death to the usefulness uh, in the family of God, and death in growing in relationship with each other as well as with God. But if we are honest and open, on the other hand, to produce us in the life of Christ, we glean the abundant life, like Akila and Priscilla, who have been mentioned for a very little time in the New Testament, but how beautifully their example was taken. They were valued colleagues in the Church of Christ. These two yoked together in Christ and stand before us as a living picture in the way our earthly loves can be glorified in the light of heaven. So if we allow God to work in our lives and allow him to shine in our lives, I'm sure God is going to use us in the way that he wants us to be. So what do we take away from this, these stories? Under God, we are able to turn our adversities into adventures like Akila and Priscilla. And they remained in history of New Testament church as valued colleagues in building God's kingdom. So brethren, this morning, God calls us to this work again, to be colleagues in building his kingdom. May God build us in his way and lead us in his ways. Thank you.